All right, we're still on the autonomic nervous system. So I wanna talk about autonomic tone. So autonomic tone is basically general activity of the ANS. Now, when we say ANS, you have to remember that it's the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic nervous system. So when you say general activity, of the autonomic nervous system, this is going to be a balance between the two. When you say autonomic tone, really this is what determines your cardiovascular health sometimes. Um, there's a lot to say about being stressed out versus being a very relaxed person. Um, if you have more sympathetic tone, um, usually you're gonna have more cardiovascular issues because you have stress. And when you have stress, you have higher heart rates, higher blood pressures, and really you should try to decrease your stress uh, on a regular basis. And the, the, really the best way to do that is gonna be deep and slow breathing, which can help trigger the parasympathetic nervous system. So autonomic tone is a balance, a balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Now these can get unbalanced. Um, diseases or conditions of the sympathetic nervous systems would be like irritable bowel syndrome um, like when you get stressed, you just get chronic diarrhea. Um, hardly anyone's going to have an imbalance in the parasympathetic nervous system. They're just rest and digest all the time. Um, but you should have autonomic tone and have a balance between the two. So when we say sympathetic tone, the sympathetic tone is going to basically regulate your blood vessels. Your sympathetic tone is going to regulate your blood vessels and it's gonna maintain your blood pressure. BP is blood pressure. Since you have to have a balance, you're also gonna need your parasympathetic tone. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. So when you think of your parasympathetic tone, this one primarily is going to maintain the smooth muscle, um, the smooth muscles in the intestines. Now we do want more rest and digest. Um, or more parasympathetic tone. We want this one to be dominant, but it's dominant in your digestive and urinary organs. And because it has cranial nerve two, it also is gonna control our heart. Now we need to be in a parasympathetic tone because it's gonna give us an average heart rate. It keeps our heart rate at 72 beats per minute. That's what we want. So if you have an imbalance in your sympathetic tone, 
and you go into stress mode, then your heart rate is gonna go up and then your blood pressure is gonna go up. So this is gonna help us keep our heart at a resting heart rate. So at rest, our average should be anywhere at 72 beats per minute. Now, when we talk about homeostasis, homeostasis of the autonomic nervous system is going to involve the central nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is gonna be maintained by the hypothalamus Remember, hypothalamus for homeostasis. Which is gonna direct signals to your brainstem. And we say brainstem, we are talking about the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. to the autonomic centers of the brainstem. Now, the autonomic centers are gonna be those centers that we talked about in the medulla oblongata, your respiratory um, reflex and your cardiovascular reflex, and also your vasomotor reflex. Um, those are in the brainstem. So, homeostasis, Basically, when we talk about the hypothalamus and ANS, your ANS is going to control your heart rate. It's going to control your digestion. It's going to control your respiratory rate. It's going to control your eyes, your pupillary response that we talked about on a previous one, previous uh, little video. It's going to control urination and many other things. So the autonomic nervous system is very important because it controls all the other systems in the body.